Hey friend, Lakshay Kokreja here from Lux Audio. Today we are gonna talk about how we can achieve loud masters. So for that, we need to understand a few loudness related terms. So you might have heard peak, RMS, LUFS. So we'll talk about all of those but in a really simplified manner so we can understand how to achieve loudness in mixing and mastering. So here we are looking at two mixes out of which I'll use the mix 2 to explain what are peaks and what is RMS. So peaks are these spikes you see in the waveform. These are momentary. And RMS is the beef of the waveform. So it's an average level. So to move forward in this video, we need to understand what is crest factor. So the difference between the peaks and the RMS is called as the crest factor. So why is crest factor important and why am I talking about this crest factor? As we can see in mix number one, there is less of the peaks and more of the beef. So overall, the song still has macro dynamics. There are ups and downs in the song. But the difference between the peaks and the RMS is very less. And that is known as the crest factor. So we have a lower crest factor. But in mix number two, we can see a lot of peaks. And the difference between the peaks and the beef is way more than mix number one. So mix number two has a higher crest factor. Now for the sake of explaining this concept, let's pull up a limiter on mix number one and let's see how loud we can get it before doing any serious limiting. Now I won't be playing any audio because I don't want to blow your ears, but let's have a look at the numbers. So we have increased 10 dBs of gain on mix number one without doing any serious damage. It goes minus 1.8 on one peak. And now let's try and do the same thing to mix number two. So I'll just copy this plugin down and let's see what it's doing. Ooh, minus five straight away. So we can see some serious limiting happening there. So the mix with a higher crest factor had to go through a lot of serious limiting and potentially serious damage before we could add 10 dBs of gain in it. Whereas mix number one could easily be gained up by 10 dBs without much gain reduction. So let's pull up a loudness meter on both the tracks and have a look at some readings. So we can see that it's a win-win for mix number one as it did not face the damage from over limiting and yet it is the louder mix. On the other hand mix number two it faced the damage from serious limiting and still it is not as loud as mix number one. So however much we think that loudness comes from mastering Yes, the last gain stage happens there, but the loudness part happens in the mix. Andrew Sheps always talks about how loud his mixes are. Me and my other couple of friends attended his speaking event a few days ago, and he was talking about how his mixes are loud. So my friends were kind of confused. They thought, uh, does he mean his mixes peak at a louder level and I was like no that's not what he means he means that the crest factor of his mixes are low 
the difference between the peaks and the bulk of the sound that is the RMS that is less. So Andrew Sheps uses a lot of parallel compression in his mixes to make the RMS, the average level, come up. So in no way am I telling you to kill the dynamics of your song. There should be macro dynamics, there should be feelings of ups and downs during the verses and choruses, but you can take care of excessive peaks in an earlier stage, that is mixing, because if you send a mix to the mastering engineer that has a higher crest factor, he will have a difficult time to get it to a certain level of loudness without making it sound over compressed or even distorted. Also, I am not suggesting that a mix should look a certain way because in the end all that matters is how it sounds, but this is just one technicality that you need to understand and be aware of in order to achieve loudness in a way that it doesn't hurt your ears. So is parallel compression the only answer for achieving a mix with a lower crest factor? Absolutely not. Let me tell you, it all begins with the arrangement of the songs. But for us as audio engineers, it begins with the very first stage of mixing, that is volume levels. After that, using compression in the right way and using tools like saturation and limiting to shave off the peaks a couple dB here and there could result in a denser mix. And that will in turn give you a lower crest factor. So that was it for this video. Hope it was helpful. If you liked the video, please hit like, throw me a comment down below and subscribe to the channel for more new exciting content. See ya on the next one.